So in our responsorial psalm, we all acclaimed the Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. And certainly I could uh, relate to this. The Lord has done great things in my life and I am filled with joy because of it. And so today I wanted to share with you uh, my personal story of my call to the priesthood and uh, some of the events that led up to it. And so I'm very happy and honored to be able to do this with you, my brothers. Um, so just a, a brief background. Uh, I'm the fourth of 10 kids. My parents, I uh, was born in Sri Lanka and I came to Canada at the age of seven uh, because of the Civil War. We uh, left Sri Lanka and came here. And I was raised in what I call a Catholic home. Uh, we prayed the rosary every night as a family. We went to mass on Sundays and even often daily mass. Uh, I was an altar server at the age of seven or eight, I think it was. And I also, when I went to high school, I went to an all boys Catholic high school in Toronto. And so I was very much, very much immersed in Catholic culture. And it was only in university when my faith was challenged for the first time. I met people of different faiths, uh, different beliefs. And naturally, I started questioning my own beliefs. You know, am I only Catholic because my parents were Catholic? I met people of other faiths, and I kind of got this impression in my conversations with them and in my classes that, you know, Christianity is just one of many paths to God. You know, all religions are somewhat equal, and just one of many paths. I started, like, wrestling with that, that question. And certainly, um, looking back, the whole uh, challenge of relativism, that all things are the same, whatever is good for you is good for you, whatever is good for me is good for me, that was something that was very prevalent uh, in my time in university about 20 years ago. And I also started in this time to pursue uh, what the world said would, would make me happy. And so whatever the world was saying, you know, just do this, have fun, have a good time, uh, that's what I started pursuing. It's my first time, as I said, really in a non-Catholic environment. And I started going down that path. And to make a long story short, and by the grace of God, I realized that this path did not lead to fulfillment and happiness. In fact, it did the opposite. I felt empty, I felt miserable, and unhappy. And, you know, I started really asking myself some deep questions, and providentially it was at this time that I was invited to get involved with a chaplaincy at York University, where I was attending. And in particular, um, I was uh, invited to go to a retreat in the spring of 2001. And so I had nothing to lose, really. And so I said, you yeah, know, well, yeah, I'll go for a change of scenery. And it was actually not too far from this area in Palmer Rapids. And so Father Ben St. Croix was our chaplain. And myself and maybe 20 other students were in this area, not too far from here, uh, and attended a retreat. And in this retreat, I would say I had a very significant encounter with Jesus during Mass, the very final Mass. I was attending with my other, you know, university students. And at the Mass, it was celebrated by Father Allen, actually. He was living at the farm, and he went uh, and celebrated Mass. He invited all of us to present our petitions and our needs on the paten, on the altar, so we could really give everything over to Jesus. And so I really did that consciously. And during the Eucharist, during the celebration of the Mass, I felt the presence of Jesus in a real way that I had never felt before. Like I knew that Jesus was real in the, in the, the sacrament in my mind, but for the first time I would say I experienced, you know, on an uh, experiential level that Jesus was truly real, and that what the Catholic faith taught was the truth. And so I had a personal encounter with Jesus, and that changed the course of my life. I was more open to my faith. I really wanted to make my faith my own, and not just something that I inherited from my parents. And we see this in the Gospel as well, <clears throat> the personal encounter of the blind man, Bartimaeus, with Jesus. And so it was around this time that Father Ben was inviting us as, as students, saying, God has a plan for your life. God has a plan for your life, and you need to find out what that is. Ask him what it is. I had never heard that kind of, you know, preaching before. You know, and, and so it was my first time really being challenged to ask God, Lord, what is the plan you have for my life? And so I started getting involved in chaplaincy. I got a spiritual director. 
uh, Father Greg was his name, a very holy man, and um, he basically uh, encouraged me to pray the prayer of uh, Bartimaeus, basically in relation to discovering God's will. You know, he said, Lord, that I may see, and Lord, that it may be. So Lord, that I may see what your will, what your plan for me is, and Lord, that it may be. And so I was really praying this prayer because I really wanted to do God's will. I had tried, you know, my own, my own will, and, and it didn't lead to happiness. I figured I'll give God a chance. So I was praying this prayer, I think, for like two, three, maybe four months, every day. Like on my commute to school, I was praying this prayer under my breath. In between the decades of the rosary, I would pray this prayer, Lord, that I may see, Lord, that it may be. And by the grace of God, God was faithful, and he answered this prayer. It was on the very particular day, November 30th, 2001, which is the Feast of St. Andrew. It was a Friday night. I was in my home parish at St. Timothy's, where Father Mark was serving as pastor. <clears throat> that particular weekend, all the companions priests, <clears throat> excuse me, they had all left uh, the parish to attend the ordination of uh, some of their brothers in Ottawa. <clears throat> and so they had <clears throat> invited a visiting priest to come and fill in for that particular Mass. And so I was attending Mass, sat at the back pew where I usually like to sit. And before Mass, I was praying the Rosary. And in between each, deca- in between each Hail Mary, I was saying, Lord, that I may see, Lord, that it may be. So I was very firm in that I really wanted to know God's plan for my life. And so anyway, so the Mass began, and there was a, a visiting priest who was an elderly priest, probably a retired priest. He may have been in his 80s. Um, anyway, so he began Mass, uh, and he said, you know, today is the Feast of St. Andrew, and I'll talk more about him in my homily. And so, all right, the Mass goes on. Uh, he starts preaching, but he surprised me and all the people gathered. It was about, you know, 100 people there at Mass. And he started talking about this random guy named Sean O'Sullivan. I never heard of him, and I thought maybe he forgot about St. Andrew, and he started talking about Sean O'Sullivan. Anyways, he started, Sean O'Sullivan, and this is the story of Sean O'Sullivan. <clears throat> he was, at the time, in the, I think, late 70s, made history in Canada by being the uh, youngest elected member of uh, uh, federal government, youngest member of parliament. I think he was 18 years old or so. And he was very successful. He was very popular. Uh, he was guaranteed to uh, win a second term, which meant that he could get another uh, you know, term and an office and also a nice cushy pension for the rest of his life, right? So he had everything going for him in terms of worldly success. But yet, uh, he, uh, he made a decision to change uh, careers. He left politics to enter the priesthood, to become a Catholic priest. And eventually he became a priest for the Archdiocese of Toronto. And uh, as a young priest, uh, he was uh, asked by his bishop to be the vocation director, which he, which he did. And um, one of his uh, ideas, one of his kind of campaigns for, to promote vocations was to put billboards all over the city uh, of Jesus crucified on the cross with the image, dare to be a priest like me. So I have actually that particular image that was given to me as a gift. So this is the image that the billboard that was placed in different parts of the city. Jesus hanging on the cross, overlooking skyscrapers, and the caption, dare to be a priest like me. And of course, it also had the the number of the vocations office at the time. So basically, the, the purpose of this campaign was to kind of challenge, evoke in young men uh, protect, you know, those who were called to the priesthood to be a priest like Jesus. And while this story was being shared in the homily, uh, the story of Sean O'Sullivan, Father Sean O'Sullivan, dare to be a priest like me, my heart was filled, I was on fire. Like, especially with those words, dare to be a priest like me, like my heart felt like it was on fire. Something was going and stirring inside of me. And at the end of the homily, you know, the priest tied it to St. Uh, Andrew. He said, how St. Andrew dared to be a priest like Jesus, and he laid down his life. He was also crucified. And it was a very beautiful, touching homily. And I left that homily thinking to myself, I think that's what the Lord wants me to do. I think that's the answer to my prayers. I've been praying, Lord, that I may see, Lord, that it may be. And the Lord is saying, dare to be a priest like me. 
So I, couldn't, I felt like at that moment, I couldn't move on with the rest of my life until I gave the priesthood a fair chance, until I discerned the priesthood. I mean, I could have pursued it, but I'm like, the Lord is telling me something there that I need to respond to. And so I did. You know, I talked to my family, I talked to my spiritual director, and after I graduated from university, at the age of 24, I joined the Companions of the Cross. Companions had been serving my home parish. Father Mark was our first pastor, and I was really uh, impacted by their joy, by their um, love for the Lord, love for Our Lady, their charismatic uh, expression of their faith, their faithfulness to the magisterium, and I saw the renewal and the impact that the priests had in my home parish. And I was attracted to that particular order. I had the privilege of meeting Father Bob, who encouraged me to be open, and he was a very good father figure to me. And so anyways, to make a long story short, I entered the Companions at the age of 24, and I was ordained a priest at the age of 32, about eight years later. You know, I had my ups and downs in the process of discernment, but yet, by the grace of God, I was ordained a priest. And uh, later on, while well, I was in seminary, actually, I, uh, well, in my first year at the farm here in Covermere, um, I, um, I came across downstairs in the library a book of Father Sean that he wrote an autobiography. And I was really moved by that. And I found out that he died of cancer at the age of, I think, 39. So he was only a priest for you know, 10, 10, 15 years at the most. He died of cancer. And while he was dying of cancer, um, uh, he was offering his vocations, uh, his suffering for vocations to the priesthood. And, um, you know, I didn't know that at the time. And when he was dying, it was in the 80s, and his bishop was visiting uh, the new, newly elected pope at the time, John Paul II. And the bishop was saying, please pray for Father Sean, my vocation director. He's dying of cancer. And John Paul II said to the bishop, tell Father Sean that by his suffering, he'll produce many vocations. And I feel like I'm one of the vocations that came from the suffering of Father Sean. And as a vocation director myself, I feel like as a companion of the cross, I have to follow in, in that footstep, offer my sufferings, uh, whatever they may be, for the purpose of God's redemptive power, and that is for vocations. Um, so that's a bit of my story. And I want to encourage you, brothers, as you are pursuing your call to the priesthood, that you may also dare to be a priest like Jesus. Um, it says in our second reading from Hebrews, every priest, high priest, is chosen among mortals. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is subject to weakness. He must first offer sacrifices for his own sins, as well as for those of the people. And so that's the role of a priest. We stand in the gap and we offer sacrifices to God, first for our own sins, and I'm very much reminded that I'm a sinner. I'm not a priest because I'm perfect and I had my act together. I'm a priest because God chose me and I said yes. Like Father Bob's prayer, not ready, Lord, but willing. We may never feel ready or worthy of the call, but that's okay. Are you willing to say yes? That's what Jesus asks. Are you willing to follow me? One of my favorite lines in the gospel, Jesus saying, be not, be not afraid. One of the great quotes of St. John Paul II, my personal hero, be not afraid. And it's a reminder to me that if I live in fear, I prevent God from doing what he wants to do in my life. But I live, if I live in faith and trust, God can do amazing things through me. And so, brothers, don't be afraid. Continue to persevere, because the Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. And so let us pray for this grace, truly surrender to God and give Him permission. I'd like you to close your eyes and bow your heads as we pray our prayer of surrender. So come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we welcome you here in our midst. We thank you for the gift of each of our lives the gift of our families, the gift of our faith. I ask you, Lord, you are the Lord of the harvest. Send today many laborers in your vineyard, many young men who will respond generously to your invitation 
to be a priest like you, Jesus, willing to lay down their life for the church and for the people of God. Help us in this day, in a particular way, to trust that you are doing amazing things. Remove any fear and anxiety from young men who are feeling the call, who feel unworthy, who feel discouraged, who feel disillusioned, that they may place their trust in you, that they may not be afraid, and to know that with God all things are possible. So Blessed Mother Mary, help us to say yes to God's plan as you generously did for the salvation of all the world. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.